Greetings. Welcome to our video service for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, coming to you from Trinity Episcopal Church in Lumberton, North Carolina. service begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up, and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them. As they were able to hear it, he did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the lessons that we read today, it seems to be mainly about planting. Most of us probably don't live on farms, but we might have some knowledge about the growth of plants. We know that planting requires someone to sow the seeds. The seeds need to have soil and the soil needs to be tilled and cultivated to allow the seeds to have space to germinate. There needs to be sufficient water and nutrients in the soil to nurture the seed. So people must apply water and fertilizer regularly in order for the seed to sprout into a small plant and gradually grow branches and leaves and then hopefully bear fruit. The seed sowing and the plant growing seem to be simple and straightforward, but we know Jesus uses simple images for his message. But the message itself is never simple and straightforward. Usually when we plant the seeds, they're buried in the soil and they dwell in darkness. And while in the darkness, they may absorb nutrients from the fertilizers in the soil and, and go through a transformation there. How long would this transformation take place? Well, we can guess, but we're not exactly sure about the timing. In fact, we don't know about that. What exactly occurs in the darkness? We're not sure. Will anything grow from the seed? We don't know that either. As a matter of fact, the sower may put in the best fertilizer, water, as often as he or she could, and tend to the seed diligently. But sometimes nothing grows from it. However, we have faith that something will grow from the seeds and we plant them anyway. And that's what our first parable in today's gospel is about, I think. God's grace and our faith the parable talks about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not far away or in the future after we leave the world, but rather like growing seeds. We need to be faithful, planting the seeds of love and have faith in those God-given seeds. God created the seed and God will graciously take care of it. We just keep planting and keep proclaiming the good news of God's love. Actually, planting is a very good metaphor for our spiritual journey and for our spiritual growth. Most of us, when we first come to know God, it's probably because someone has planted the seed in us. We go to church, we worship, 
listen to the messages and study the Bible and other teachings. We perhaps may join some fellowship and enjoy the hospitality and hear and see the testimony of, of other Christians. And slowly we come to understand the word and the way. After planning, the nurturing takes place. Eventually, some may be moved to accept God, some may not. How long will this transformation take place? We don't know. There may be charismatic preachers or well-known theologians who inspire people to plant the seed, but most likely it's a friend's testimony that does that. The companionship of a regular parishioner, someone like that can nurture us along our spiritual journey. In our Episcopal tradition, we baptize people of all ages. But at baptism, the transformation begins. During baptism, the celebrant blesses the water, says these words, we thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Our service tells the candidates to bury their past lives after baptism. This is like the metaphor of planting. Someone plants the seeds, but if the seed is not buried, it never releases its old form. It's difficult to sprout and become new shoots and have new life. So therefore, following our Lord, we need to die from our old lives before we can be born again. When the seed is buried in the soil, it, it dwells in the darkness. And while in the darkness, it absorbs the nutrients from the fertilizers in the soil and goes through transformation. Our life journey can be the same. Sometimes it is when we feel buried in dark moments, surrounded by fertilizer, that we are actually receiving God's gracious blessing in our life. However, we may become afraid during that time and reject the presence of God we can become choked by the darkness and no spiritual growth can occur. But by accepting the grace of God, we can go through transformation and have new life. Eventually the plant inside the seed will break through the soil and the plant will sprout into a new small plant and grow leaves and flowers and branches and then fruits. So I think the message seems to be that we should endure the dark moments because a new life will come out of it. In other lessons, we also read about planting. In our lectionary Old Testament reading of Ezekiel this week, a twig is planted, bears fruits. We might have thought that a young twig would not have a chance to survive since it has no root. But because of God's grace and love, it grows into a noble cedar tree and offers shelter to God's other creations. So we should also look at the second parable in our gospel today. It talks about the smallest of all seeds growing into the largest of all shrubs. These are about something small that turns out to be big and great. But this greatness is not about the product itself, but about its effect of offering protection and a resting place to others. In God's kingdom, anything is possible. The kingdom of God is not for material gain, of course, but it's about God's love for us and our love for God for each other. The Easter season is over. The Holy Spirit has come. 
during the great 50 days of the Easter season, the lections have been about love and about the transformation of the followers of Jesus who were once doubtful and fearful and nearly faithless. They had gone through dark times. Finally, they got over their fear and became leaders of the church. They proclaimed the love of God to the ends of the earth. The most reverend Michael Curry the presiding bishop of our Episcopal Church likes to talk about a movement. He says he heard someone talk about a revolutionary movement begun by Jesus of Nazareth nearly 2,000 years ago. And this movement was based on the unconditional love of God for the world. And Bishop Curry urges people to go into the world and let the world know that there is a God who loves us. God who will not let us go and that that love can set us free. Bishop Curry says, this is the Jesus movement and we are the Episcopal Church, the Episcopal branch of Jesus movement in the world. So, we should not be afraid of dark moments. Keep the faith. Do not underestimate the small or the weak for God has a plan for God's creation we should keep planting and loving God and carrying on in the Jesus movement let us pray keep O oh Lord your household the church in your steadfast faith and love that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children to the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing.
Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.